Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. I have to pick you up one by one and ask them to say good evening, is it? Huh? Please sit down.
Now if you come and see, two girls down there. When we were young, okay, after the Astro, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be. We were wearing dresses like this. We wore, can you do this? We wore dresses like this. Okay? Today, you are wearing dresses like this. Look! What? <laughs> we wore dresses like this. And from this, we were all elegant. We were all modern, dressed up, modestly, in a very high fashion, and we were very dignified in whatever we did. And look what your situation is today. See what clothes you are wearing today. And you are saying, Miss, we are in the height of fashion. And these stone clothes cost more than clothes which look elegant and are fully wearable. Yes or no? Shameless children. Go back to your faces. I don't want to see your faces at all. Come here, I'll show you. Come here, come here, come here, come here. See the type of clothes we wore when we were young. Were we looking old fashioned? Did we look old fashioned? Look at these clothes. Yes or no? Do we look old fashioned? We were in height in the height of fashion. We look very elegant. We look very modern. We look very decent. And see what you are wearing today. Look what you are wearing. And you are in the height of fashion. From where to where? Look, stare, and see the difference. And the way you will have dropped down tremendously, and you think you are in the height of fashion. You are reaching the gutters. <laughs> These clothes are not even fit for the gutters. The gutters will spit them out. When there's a flood, all this will come out. <laughs> Get inside. What? What did you say? <laughs> Oh, Miss, we are in the height of fashion. What fashion this is, I don't know. Might as well go with our feet clothes, no? Have all of you signed that paper? Yes, ma'am. You, you just come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, hurry. Oh, he's taking his pen out now. Wow. Have all of you signed? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's go. Come forward. Come forward. The people won't come to you, but come to the people. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, all time, yes? Okay, fine. Which way, the author? What is an author? Does anybody know what an author is? Author. O T T E R, not A U T H O R. Author. Professional author. I'm a writing teacher. It's a mammal, okay, what else? One, one moment. Do you know what question I asked that boy tonight? What? What is the answer then? If I get up from this seat, you better pray that God comes down to help you. Because besides him, nobody else can help you out because my rage is so bad. What is an otter? The boy in front. Keep aside. It's a mammal, that's what he said. What else? What is a mammal? I don't know what a mammal is. What is a mammal? What is a mammal? Will you please look in front? What's a mammal? Who 
put the man They do not lay eggs. They give birth to their babies. Maybe shape themselves. Maybe child. But full grown. Okay. Another thing is, this is an amphibian. What is an amphibian? They live in water as well as on land. Comfortable in both. Water as well as land. Now, this is actually the mango species. Have you all seen a mango? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is from that. That is very prevalent. Or they are very found. The species are mostly found in the Middle East. Okay, the hot country. Yes, you're already in. May I come in? So, that is, this is it. It has just become an author. Now, early in the new year of 1956, I'm going to ask you a question, and if anyone doesn't answer the question, I will chew you up. Early in the new year of 1956, I traveled to southern Iraq. By then it had crossed my mind that I should like to keep an otter instead of a dog and that Camus Vienna, where is Camus Vienna? It is in Scotland. So this is a Britisher, but who has gone to Iraq. He's yeah. got yeah. You know I said I will chew you up. <coughs> where is your book? So you're already standing on weak ground. You better watch out. Where are your books? You got your book? You? Book. He doesn't have a book. All of you have your books? That boy, read the book. Book. I want to see your senses in your hands. Don't sit and look and stare at me as if you're not seeing the rest of the book. Write the beginning. Write the meaning. All right, so this is a place in Scotland. Now, what do they say? It rained by water, a stone's throw away from its door. That's really what? What should be that? Rained by water, a stone throw away from its door. Meaning what? Meaning what? It is an island. Okay, and uh, stone's throw away, that's the distance where, okay. That much of water is surrounded in that island. Would be eminently suitable spot for this experiment. So this particular area would be eminently very effective or very efficient spot for the experiment. What experiment you wanted to have? What experiment? What do you think was the experiment that you were going to start? That boy? What was the experiment that you wanted to start? Have? He wanted to loudly. John Brown, I will smash you. Kick, kick to the end, to the wall. Yes, you. What was his experiment? Do you know? What? He wanted to. So what is this? What's what's the specialty? Was I don't know what. Uh, otter and water. Being around the island. What's the special, what's the relationship between water around the island and water in the island? Do you know that by the back? No, you will not know. You're not in the world, in this world. You? The, uh, it's an amphibian. What's an amphibian? We can live in water as well as on land. So therefore, that was the speciality of an island. But where is the otter at present? Where is the otter at present? Is it? Iraq. Iraq is an Iraqi island. But then why do you think he, he is, you know, he found the prediction for that we talk about later on. Why do you think he thought about an otter when he was in Iraq? Why do you think he thought about an otter of all the animals when he went to Iraq? Because who 
Why, why, why? Because authors are very prevalent in Iraq. Often, that is the mentality of human beings. When they see plenty of something, they want to have it. If he saw plenty of dogs, beautiful little dogs, I also want to buy a dog. If you found some very beautiful things like, you know, these ragged t-shirts and the ragged hats, oh, even I want to wear them. When you find them in plenty, you want to buy them. Similarly here, he could have kept a dog, but he felt that since he saw plenty of authors in Iraq, he also wanted to have one. And he said, okay, if I have one in Iraq, I've got to take that to Scotland because I am an inhabitant dog, Scotland. And there, it's very fine because this mammal wants to live on land as well as at sea. And he has got plenty of sea in Scotland. There must be a now. When I casually mentioned this to a friend, he as casually replied that I had better get one in the Tigris marshes. Where is the Tigris marshes? In Iraq. For there, they were as common as mosquitoes and were often tamed by the Arabs. We were going to Basra to the Consulate General to collect and answer our mail from Europe. At the Consulate General, we found that my friend's mail had arrived, but that mine had not. What did I come on the set story now? I came into England and when three days later nothing had happened, I tried to telephone. The call had to be booked 24 hours in advance. On the first day, the line was out of order. On the second, the exchange was closed for a religious holiday. On the third day, there was another breakdown. My friend left and I arranged to meet him in a week's time. Five days later, my mail arrived. Where is all this happening? In Iraq. The very fact that he said that the telephone lines gave trouble and, and there was a holiday lockdown. It's only happening in those type of countries. And of course in India. Every second day is a holiday. Some religious holiday will have banks closed, this closed, that closed. And if they are not closed for a holiday, they are closed on a spot because of some strike. You find that only in India or in these type of places. Never in America. Okay? Now. I carried it to my bedroom. Carried what to my bedroom? That boy. One more my mouth shut. I carried it to my bedroom. What is that? Daughter. Oh, then. The me. I carried it to my bedroom to read. And there, squatting on the floor. Squatting. What do you mean squatting? That mouth shut. That boy in the back. Brown t shirt. What do you mean squatting? Squatting on the floor. <coughs> Squatting on the floor. Okay. I'm pointing out to that boy. And you are opening your mouth. Am I cocky? Am I cocky? Not that boy. Spike t-shirt. What man squatting on the floor? <laughs> squatting means sitting flat on the ground. Squatting on the floor. For two hours. Beside them lay a sack that squirmed from time to time. Squirming, something was shaking, and the sack was shifting, shifting. They handed me a note from my friend. Which friend? The same friend that had that was in it. That's right. Here's your order. So you got the pet. With the opening of that sack began a phase of my life. Phase me. That part of my life that has not yet ended. Means still today he's got that otter, and that otter must be giving him a time of his life. So he says, My life has not yet ended. And may I for all know, not end before I do. Not end before I do means what? Uh, not end before he dies. Yeah. My life with the otter may not end before my life is. <coughs> my life ends. It is in effect a call room to otters and otter fixation that I have ever that I have seen 
time to be shared by most of other people who have ever over the West. At least what it is an old fashioned style for all the people in Iraq to possess an otter. Okay? Like as we used to have old people, they always had a cat in the house. Not a dog. Dog is high maintenance, but cat, no. They are managed to clean themselves, they are little, little creatures, and all old people love to have a cat. The creature had that emerged from the sack on the spacious tile floor of the concert bedroom, resembling most of all a very small, medievally conceived dragon. Okay, dragon up in a middle, middle, medieval village. From the head to the tip of the tail, he was covered with symmetrical pointed scales of mud armor, meaning his tail, his hair was caked, caked with dried mud. Pretty animal. Okay? He didn't come from a pedigree, he didn't come from a pet shop. They must have caught on a nice fellow, put him into the sack and brought him full of dirt and the hair was all spiked. You know, we have spiked hair, purple color, green color, blue color, any of these pumps. This had spikes full of mud, dried mud. Pointed scales of mud armor. Armor means it was dangerous, pokey. Between whose tips was visible a soft velvet fur. So between, as the hair was standing up, between the two peaks, you will see soft, Velvet fur, like that of a chocolate brown mole. He shook himself, and I half expected a cloud of dust. But in fact, it was not for another month that I managed to remove the last of the mud and see the otter as it was in its true color. So it took him one month to scrap that creature because that was not mud, it was clay. Okay, clay that really caught up. So it became one man to clean him and see the actual color of the animal. Michibin, as I call the otter, was in fact of a race previously unknown to science and was at length Christian by zoologist Lugdrukal, Percy Silata, Maxwell or Maxwell Otter. For the first 24 hours, Pitchbill was neither hostile nor friendly. Hostile means he wasn't dangerous. Okay? Not friendly and he was not also friendly. He was simply aloof, far away from human touch. He was indifferent, didn't bother about what was happening, just totally not reacting to the environment around. Choosing to sleep on the floor as far from my bed as possible. The second night, which will came onto my bed in the small hours and remained asleep in the crook of my knees. So, the many knees were folded, and here the otter slept. All animals do that. They love to jump on the bed and sleep on the bed. Until the servant brought tea in the morning. And during the day, he began to lose his apathy and take a keen, much too keen interest in his surroundings. Apathy meaning more indifference, lack of interest. He began to lose it. He started showing interest in everything that was around him. I made a body belt for him and took him on a leave to the bathroom. Body belt, harness that you have for your dog. Simply he made a belt to lead him. That's the way you leave the animal. To lead him to the bathroom, where for half an hour, he went wild with joy in the water, plunging and rolling in, plunging, <coughs> jumping into, <coughs> shooting up and down the length of the bathtub, underwater, and making enough slosh and splash for a hippo. Slosh means sound, sloshing, splashing, of water, sloshing of water for a hippo. This I was to learn is a characteristic of otters. Every drop of water must be, so to speak, extended and spread about the plane. Extended means it should not remain like one part. That's to be spread out. So they love 
to spread water all over the place. A bowl must at once be overturned, or if it will not be overturned, the satin he wants to sit inside the bowl and slush in it until it overflows. Water must be kept on the move and made to do things. When static, it is wasted and broke. When static, when it is still, it is wasted. Meaning, it's a waste of water to have water just lying there. Okay? It has to be made use of. And provoking means irritating, causing anger. Anger. Two days later, Miss Bill escaped from my bedroom. And as I entered it, and I turned to see his tail disappearing around the bend of the corridor that led to the bathroom. By the time I got there, he was up on the end of the bathtub and fumbling at the chromium tap with his paws, fumbling, fiddling, struggling to open the tap. I watched, amazed. In less than a minute, he had turned the tap far enough to produce a trickle of water and after a moment or two, achieved the full flow. When he opened the tap fully, he had been lucky to turn the tap the right way. On later occasions, he would sometimes screw it up still tighter, meaning he would turn it the opposite way and tighten the tap. Chittering and irritation. Chittering is getting that chattering sound with his teeth, which so annoying. With irritation and disappointment as a tax failure to cooperate, means the tap to open up and give him water. Very soon, Mitch would follow me without a lead and come to me when I called his name. He spent most of his time in play. He spent hours shuffling the rubber ball round the room like a four-footed soccer player, using all four feet to dribble the ball, and he would also throw it with a powerful flick of the neck to a surprising height and distance. But the real play of an otter is when he lies on his back and juggles with small objects between his paws. Juggles means he's on play. Okay? Marbles were Mitch's favorite toys for this past time. He would lie on his bed, rolling two or more of them up and down his wide, flat belly without ever dropping one on the floor. He would wrap the marbles up and down his stomach. <coughs> the days passed peacefully at Basra, but I dreaded the prospect of transporting Mitch to England and to Cambridge, Vienna. The British airline to London would not fly on the mills, so I booked a flight to Paris on another airline and from there to London. The airline insisted that Mitch should be packed into a box, not more than 18 inches square, to be carried on the floor at my feet. I had a box made, and an hour before we started, I put Mitch into the box so that he would become accustomed to it and left for a hurried meal. When he ran to have his meal while the otter was kept in a box. When I returned, there was an appalling spectacle, shocking, appalling means shocking spectacle. There was complete silence from the box, but from its air holes and chinks around the lid, chinks mean little open spaces, around the lid, blood had trickled and dried. I whipped up the lock and tore open the lid, and Mitch, exhausted and blood spattered, blood spattered me, having blood all over his body whimpered and caught at my leg. He had torn the lining of the box to shred. What is the lining of the box? The box was wooden. And he made a soft lining inside so that the otter would be comfortable. That lining this fellow turned, tore. And while he was carrying, he must have hurt his mouth and that's how the blood had oozed out and splattered all over the place. He had torn the lining of the box to shred, shred me to pieces. When I removed the last of it, that there were no cutting edges left. It was just 10 minutes until the time of the flight, and the airport was five miles distant. I put the miserable Mitch back into the box, holding down the lid with my hand. I 
sat in the back of the car with the box beside me as the driver tore through the streets of Basra like a record setting pure bullet, bottoming up, tearing through the streets. Driving very fast, driving very fast. The aircraft was waiting to take off. I was rushed through it by an infuriated official. Infuriated means angry. Why were the officials angry? Because he was late. Because he was late. They had to check him in, they had to check his luggage, weigh his luggage, uh, label the luggage, all that had to be done. And this fellow has come in almost with the plane was taking off. What's the record? When he hit a bullet, it moved so fast. That fast speed is called ricocheting. Luckily, the seat book for me was at the extreme front. I covered, I covered the floor around my feet with newspapers, rang for the air hostess and gave her a parcel of fish for Mitch to keep in a cool place. I took her into my confidence about the events of the last half an hour. What were the events of the last half an hour? What were the events of the last half an hour? That boy. What were the events? What were the events of the last half an hour? So why the author, Maxwell, had gone for his lunch, the box in which which was kept, be accustomed to it, was absolutely destroyed. And he explained it to the air, uh, because she must have seen the disgraceful box in his hand. Okay, so she must have, then he told her straight away when he told it half an hour before I could come, he explored it, see his blood, see the climbing, see all this. And I had no time to fix it. That's what he wanted to know. I have retained the most profound admiration for that Air Force dress. She was the very queen of her time. She suggested that I might prefer to have my pet on my knee and I could have kissed her hand in the depth of my gratitude. But not knowing otters, I was quite unprepared for what followed. Which was out of the box in a flash. He disappeared at high speed down the aircraft. There were squawks and shrieks, and a woman stood up on her seat, screaming out, a rat, a rat. I caught sight of Mitch's face disappearing beneath the legs of a portly white turban Indian. Portly fat. Fat fellow. Yeah, short like a pot. Turban Indian. Diving for it, I missed it, but found my face covered in curries. Prabhai got the curry now. Prabhai got the curry. People were eating, obviously, but it hit that tray, and the curry came on his face. Perhaps, said the air hostess, with the most charming smile, it could be better if you resume your seat, and I will find the animal and bring it to you. You must be having immense patience. Thank God people like me don't become air hostess. Yes. No. <laughs> Give him my hand slap. <laughs> slap him hard. Oh, the floor came. Oh, yes. That is here. Irritating pest. I will bring the animal to you. I turned to my seat and I was craning my neck trying to follow the hunt when suddenly I heard from my feet a distressed chitter of recognition and welcome, and Mitch bounded onto my knee and began to nuzzle my face and my neck. When they do that, all your temper disappears. Because that's the way the animals, they know that they've done the wrong thing, and then they make up by coming and kissing you, licking you all over the place. Mitch and I remained in London for nearly a month. He would play for hours with a selection of toys, ping pong balls, marbles, rubber fruit, and a terrapin shell that I had brought back from his native marshes. 
with a ping pong ball, he invented a game of his own, which could keep him engrossed for up to half an hour at a time. A suitcase that I had paid in to get up had become damaged on the journey home, so that the lid, when closed, remained at a slope from one end to the other, and the lid could not be completely cut flat. It was an angle. Okay, so what we would do, we would keep the ball here and the ball would come rolling and the middle would run the side and catch the ball there. Okay, that was his game. Mitch discovered that he played, if he placed the ball on the high end, it, it would run down the length of the suitcase. He would dash around to the other end to ambush it the right and attack it, catch it in its fall. Hide from it and crouching to spring up and take it by surprise, wrap it and prop up with the high end once more. Outside the house, I exercised him on a lily, precisely as if he had been a dog. Mitch quickly developed certain compulsive habits. Compulsive habits means without thinking, you know, they were just habitual habits, out of control. Compulsive habits of these walks in the London streets, like the rituals of children who on their way to and from school must place their feet squarely on the center of each paving block. Children put their feet center of each block. That's just their style. That's just the way they play on the way home. Must touch every seven upright of the railing, of the iron railings, or pass to the outside of every second lamp post. Opposite to my flat was a single story primary school all along, along whose frontage ran a low wall some two feet high. On his way home, but never on his way out, Mitch would tug me to his wall, jump on it, and gallop the full length of its 30 yards to the hopeless distraction both of pupils and of staff within. What if you have understood this? What he's trying to say is that when he took the otter out of the house, not when the otter came in, but when he took him out, the otter would run at full speed onto the 30 feet length of the walls, two inch walls. And the teachers and the school children, babies, they would sit and watch this animal running up and down. It is not, I suppose, in any way strange that the average Londoner should not recognize an author. Why would an average Londoner not recognize an author? Why would an average Londoner not recognize an author? Because, yeah, because in London, authors are very rare, they are not seen at all. It is not, I suppose, in any way strange that the average Londoner should not recognize an author. But the variety of guesses as to what kind of animal this might be came as a surprise to me. Otters belong to a comparatively small group of animals called mustelids, shared by the badger, the mongoose, the weasel, the stork, the mink, and others. I faced a continued barrage of conjectural questions that sprayed all over the muskelion, but the author, more random guesses, hit on a baby seal or on a squirrel. Is that a walrus, Mr. Reduce me to giggles. And outside a dog show, I heard a hippo, a weaver, a bear, a leopard, one apparently that had changed its form. And a bronto sword which was anything but an otter. But the question for which I awarded the highest score was a pay from a laborer digging a hole in the street. I was still far from him when he laid down his stool, put his hands on his hips, and began to stare. As I drew nearer, I saw his expression of surprise and affront as though he would have me know that he was not one upon whom to play jokes. I came abreast of him, came abreast of him, walked and came up to him. He was standing there, I was walking in and came alongside him. He sat, he glared, I 
and his dad growled out, Yo, sister, what is that supposed to be? And Mr. Pindala said, All of you, read it any paragraph, any words, or any part you have not understood, please ask me. Now, what is the problem of this rain? And I didn't carry an umbrella. Who asked you what your problem is? Come on, read. Anyone wants my book, you can take it. Hurry up, read, let me know.
So you've started reading, take up your volume and start with your exercises. You'll have class tomorrow? Yes. Come on, come on, start now with your work. Start with your right volume. Start writing the volume, quick. Teachers do grammar. We keep on revising grammar. Okay. Why don't you keep your book here? Shift that, shift it. Right to the right and sit comfortably.
siyempre. Thank <laughs> you. 